video is sponsored by Pronamel. I've been on a very interesting journey over the last two months diving deep into the world of homemade vinegars. And you know I'm obsessed with all things fermentation. And what I've realized is that every time I try one of these new fermentation projects, well, it ends up being so much better than the store-bought stuff. Plus, you save a ton of money, which is awesome. And vinegar is something that's been on my radar for a while. And I just figured, why not? Homemade vinegar, it can't be that hard, right? Well, We'll see, that's the point of today's video. I'm gonna be diving deep into all things vinegar. We're gonna talk about the science. I'm gonna show you all the mistakes that I made over the last few months and also an epiphany that I had that really led to a breakthrough in my homemade vinegar making. And then of course, once we have all these delicious vinegars, well, they open up a pretty crazy world of culinary opportunity. So I'm gonna show you my favorite ways that I've been putting these vinegars to use in the kitchen. So before we get into making vinegar, well, we have to understand what vinegar is. I'm sure you've heard of it. Most of you have probably used it in your cooking because it adds acidity, but it's actually not all acidity. It's three different elements. It's mostly made up of water and only around four to 6% of vinegar is actually acidic acid. And then the last part of vinegar is the flavoring coming from whatever you actually use to make the vinegar itself. Now, vinegar is a very unique fermentation process because it's actually a two-stepper. It's using two different fermentation processes to make the final product. Part one is alcohol fermentation. So you first need alcohol and to get alcohol, well, you need some type of product that has sugar in it, naturally occurring sugars. And then you have wild yeast that are feeding off of those sugars. And as the yeast feed off those sugars, the byproduct from that process is alcohol. So that is step one of the vinegar process is first we need an alcohol. So let's talk about part two of the fermentation process, which is the acidic fermentation, taking alcohol and converting it into the acidic acids that make up vinegar. So let's take a glass of red wine as a great example. Once you pour that glass of red wine into a cup, you've taken your wine out of the safety of its bottle, which it was really enjoying. It was aging really nicely. And now you've exposed it to the entire environment. And in that environment, environment, well, you've got bacteria. But specifically, a certain bacteria called Acetobacter is really going to enjoy feeding off that alcohol, but it needs one other thing, which is oxygen. Without that oxygen, the Acetobacter can't survive and it can't thrive and you won't get vinegar. So when you have your wine exposed to all that oxygen, that's when the Acetobacter can start to thrive and take over and convert the alcohol into acetic acid which is step two of the fermentation process. So if you leave that wine out long enough, exposed to oxygen, well, time and Acetobacter is going to take over and eventually turn that wine into red wine vinegar. Now, it's very important to note that the Acetobacter will only thrive in a specific range of alcohol, around six to 12% alcohol by volume. So that's why so many of the vinegar products that you see that are popular on the shelves that you probably use in your cook Cooking, well, they come from alcohol products that have that six to 12% range of alcohol because the Acetobacter, it's not surviving under 6% and it's not surviving over 12%. So any of these alcohols, if you leave exposed to oxygen, they will turn into some delicious vinegar that you can then use in your cooking. Now, there are so many different products you can make vinegar from. The options are pretty much endless, but today I'm going to be focusing my efforts solely on fruit because fruit is available to everyone. There's naturally occurring sugars in fruit, so you have everything there. You don't need to add anything. It's just one ingredient, whatever fruit you want, and that's the best part. You can use whatever fruit you want, and that's the goal of today to really try a bunch of different fruits because you go to the store and you can only get so many vinegars, but I really wanted to test out a whole variety of fruits to see what gives me the best final vinegar product for my cooking. So I ended up going to 
farmer's market and getting a bunch of fruit that was in season because it was important to get fruit that was fresh and also peak of the season fruit that was full of sugar. And I came back to the studio and the first thing I did was sanitize the glass jars that I was using, which is important for any fermentation process. You always want to be as clean as possible. So the next step was washing all the fruit and then I started preparing it for the jars. So I cut a bunch of the fruit up into different pieces. If the fruit was smaller, like blueberries, I placed a bunch of them in the jar and mashed them a little bit to really break it down and expose those sugars. And the only fruit that I used that wasn't fresh, which is very important to note, were raisins. So I filled those up about a quarter of the way full. And once everything was prepared, all of my fruit was in the jars, I topped everything off with water. And again, you need to expose everything to oxygen to ultimately get the vinegar. So what I did was I topped them off with a coffee filter, which will keep out all of the dust, all the things you don't want in there, but it will allow the oxygen to flow through. But you can also just use a towel over top of your jars. Now here's where things get interesting. So to get vinegar it takes around 30 to 60 days. So after a few days, you should start to see some bubbles when you look in the glasses, which is a good sign that the alcohol fermentation process is taking place because as the yeast eats the sugar, one of the byproducts is carbon dioxide. So seeing those bubbles is a great sign that everything's going as planned. But for me, I had to move my entire fermentation process to my house because I was in the process of moving. And there might have been a few days there where I wasn't stirring everything up. So what happened was I was starting to develop a little bit of mold on top of a few of the fruits. And now a little bit of white mold doesn't mean you have to start over the entire process. It can be removed and the process can continue. But my mold got a little out of control with a few of the fruits. It was just hard to stay ahead. Every time I would remove some, more mold would form. And I was just having a lot of issues to the point where I was pretty bummed out and I just felt like, all right, this is a fail. I've got to try something new. I got to start over. And then I realized that the one jar with raisins in it, the one dried fruit, well, that was doing just great. There was no mold forming there. I saw a lot of bubbles. It smelled really nice. It started to smell like vinegar. So I just let that one go. I kept stirring it every day. And after around 20 days, it started tasting like vinegar and really good vinegar. And at that point I strained it off. I felt like the raisins had done their job. Let it go for another 10 days. And after 30 days, I had an incredible raisin vinegar. Like I'm telling you, this stuff was amazing. I was throwing in stir fry and I was loving this product. And one of the best parts about vinegars is once you jar them, once they're turned into vinegar, well, they age just like wine and they turn into better aged vinegar. But the raisin vinegar success had me thinking that maybe dried fruit was the way to go. Maybe I need to start over this entire project with dried fruit. And that's exactly what I did. So what I did was I went all in on the dried fruit. I kind of used it also as an excuse to just get a bunch of dry fruit, which are pretty much nature's fruit snacks. And I got a wide variety of dried fruit, again, to really test out the product and see what makes the best vinegars. So I started over and I put the dried fruit in each of the jars, filling it up about a third of the way, depending on the size of the fruit. And I topped them with water, covered them up and let them go to work. See if the dried fruit will convert better into into alcohol and then into vinegar. And after around five days, I had some incredible bubbly product. All the glasses were now bubbling away. So I was getting pretty excited. They were off to a really good start. And after around 10 days, I could really smell the alcohol coming off the jars. And also I tasted it and I could taste a bit of that fruit alcohol forming, which was another good sign. The alcohol process was underway. So I just kept stirring it, kept staying on top of it. And after around 20 days, most of the fruits were starting to convert into vinegar, which was very exciting. When I tasted it, they all had a unique vinegar flavor, but I was still tasting a little bit of the residual alcohol. So what I did was I strained off all of the fruit because at that point it really had done its job. And then I just let those sit there for another 10 days. And around day 30, they were all tasting like delicious fruit vinegar. I barely had any 
white mold issues. Maybe a little here or there. If a tiny bit of white mold showed up, I would just scoop it out and continue on. So after around 30 to 35 days, I was really happy with the flavors of the vinegar. So I capped them off and again, that is the best part about vinegar. Once they're capped off, they're aging in these bottles. And what I've noticed is the raisin vinegar that's been sitting in this bottle for around 40 days, this is just continuing to get better compared to these fresh vinegars, like this strawberry vinegar. This has been sitting in here for around 10 days. Still tastes like good vinegar, but I'm sure it's going to age very well like a wine. You know on Pro Home Cooks, I'm a huge proponent of fermented foods. I make them all the time, I consume them all the time, I try to put out as much education on this channel as possible on how to make them at home because they unlock unique flavors in your food and also they unlock key nutrients that are important for your health that you can't get from consuming raw foods. But it's also important to remember that a lot of these fermented foods, especially the ones that fall under the acidic fermentation like kombucha that I make all the time and vinegar, which this video video is all about, do have the potential to weaken the enamel of your teeth. Tooth enamel is the visible outermost covering your teeth, which protects the inner sensitive layers of your teeth. And having healthy enamel is also the key to having white teeth. So when we eat a ton of acidic food, the acids can weaken or damage your enamel, leaving your teeth vulnerable to higher sensitivity, which of course is no fun, and discoloring, which doesn't look good. Now I drink a lot of kombucha, I eat a lot of citrus, and I use vinegar all the time in my cooking because you know very well, without acidity, our food's just a little boring. It really brightens it up. But it is important for me to protect my teeth, protect my enamel from eroding over time so I can continue to eat these acidic foods. And one of the best ways to create that long-term protection is to brush your teeth with Pronamel, which is a toothpaste that I use daily because I eat so much acidic foods and Pronamel can help really strengthen your enamel and also protect it from the long-term effects of tooth erosion. So it's all about finding a balance that makes sense. And for me, I eat a ton of acidic foods. So it's important to me that I take the proper precautions to protect my teeth so I can continue to eat these foods. So that's something to keep in mind, especially as we get into this next part of the video, which is all about incorporating more vinegar into the food you're making. So to be honest, I haven't had as much time as I would have liked to to experiment with these vinegars because of the late breakthrough with the dried fruit. But in general, I am very impressed. Once I got the dried fruit technique down, it wasn't hard to do and the product is amazing. So happy to have these in my pantry. I'm sure you'll see them come up a lot in my future videos. And one that I have been experimenting with a lot that's been aging really nicely is the raisin vinegar, which is really just a nice smooth vinegar. It's not too sweet. I've been throwing this in everything, specifically a lot of stir fries to replace you know, a rice vinegar when I want some acidity in the dish. And recently I've been making this patsyu recipe that I really like that starts off with two tablespoons of soy sauce, one tablespoon of mirin, one teaspoon of sesame oil, one tablespoon of chili paste, and then three tablespoons of raisin vinegar. I got some oil in a pan on high heat and started stir frying some onions and some pepper until they start to get some nice color. Then I push those to the side, add a little more oil and fry up a few eggs. Once the eggs are fried up nicely, I chop them up, mix them in with the dish. Then I added some fresh corn that was cut off the cob because it's super in season and I like the crunch it adds. And then my patsyu style noodles, which are a flat rice noodle, but you can use any type of rice noodle for this. And the key is adding that sauce right after you add the noodles because those noodles are gonna soak up that sauce. And then finally I hit it with some fresh basil. If you have Thai basil, that would be a huge bonus. And just mix that around until it's wilted and serve. Now, of course you can use any of these vinegars to make a delicious vinaigrette, but the best part is now we've got all of this built in flavor. So I'm gonna make a strawberry vinaigrette, but I don't have to blend up strawberries. The strawberry flavor is already in here and this strawberry vinegar is 
fantastic and I have a very good feeling it's going to age well. It's already off to a great start. So to make this vinaigrette, I'm gonna start off with half a cup of the strawberry vinegar, one spoonful of mustard, and then I grated in one clove of garlic, hit it with a little bit of salt and pepper, and then at this point I decided, yeah, I'll add a little extra sweetness. So I added about two teaspoons of honey, and then I took a whisk and mixed that up and started to emulsify in my oil and the ratios are completely up to you. It's your vinaigrette. I'm going about one to one oil to vinegar. So I slowly emulsified in around a half cup of oil and I had my finished beautiful strawberry vinaigrette. Now this blueberry vinegar is definitely one of my favorites and it was really easy to make. All of the small dried fruit, like the dried blueberries and the dried raisins, they were just really simple vinegars to make. So that's a nice key tip. If you wanna start with something easy, start with smaller dried fruit. And this is pretty mild overall. It's not as acidic as the other ones and it has a really nice sweetness. So the first thing that came to my mind is making a shrub, which is a non-alcoholic style drink made with vinegar. And all you have to do is add some soda water to a cup, hit it with your vinegar, and then I added a little bit of basil as well for an extra layer of aroma. And at this point you could add a simple syrup if you wanted a little extra sweet, but I liked it with just the blueberry vinegar. And that's just a great non-alcoholic style drink and also a great way to get the raw vinegar in your body to get the health benefits of the pure vinegar. Now this mango vinegar was really interesting. Super acidic, has a great punch, really good mango flavor and also the thickest. The mangoes really thickened it up. And the first thing I thought about when I got the finished product was some type of mango barbecue sauce. So for this barbecue sauce, I'm gonna cook down some onions, some carrot and some garlic in oil. Because I was adding mango to the barbecue sauce, I was really pushing the Caribbean flavors. So I added one habanero cut up without the seeds and I cooked that down for another few minutes until they're super soft and they're nice and caramelized. Then I added one cup of crushed tomatoes, a third of a cup of molasses, a third of a cup of soy sauce, and then one cup of that mango vinegar. And then I hit it with a bunch of salt and you can add a little water if you want to thin this out a bit because it will thicken once we blend it up. And I let that simmer for about 10 minutes making sure to stir it and once that was finished, I poured it into a food processor and blended it up. And now that we have our barbecue sauce, well, we need some wings and luckily I had some baked wings coming fresh out of the oven. So I tossed those wings in that barbecue sauce and hit them with a little bit of green onion. And finally, the last recipe I'm gonna show you is using apple cider vinegar, which for me felt like the least impressive vinegar. And I don't know, maybe that's just because I've been using apple cider vinegar pretty much my whole cooking career. And it's good, it came out nice. I think over time it's getting better. I'm starting to taste um, some better flavor notes in this with the aging, but compared to these other ones, I don't know, just not as fun. But having said that, I'm gonna show you just a great morning tonic or tea, just a great way to start your day off in a really clean way to almost clear out your system. So take a cup or a mug, add a little bit of lemon juice, a little bit of honey, and then some apple cider vinegar, and pour over some boiling water, and boom, you've got your tea. So simple, but such an incredible way to start off your morning. Trust me on that. And that's all the recipes I'm gonna show you, but there were other vinegars, like this peach vinegar that was incredible, one of my favorites as well. But what a fun experiment that that was, I learned so much. Hopefully you're inspired to try this at home. It really is simple. Once I got the dried fruit, everything was rolling smoothly. And now, I mean, I've got all of these vinegars to, to have fun with in the kitchen, which is very exciting stuff and the beauty of fermentation. And if you like this fermentation project and you're on a roll and you want some more, well, here you go. I've got more fermentation for you right here. So that's it. I'll see you in the next video. This video was sponsored by Pronamo. Thanks for watching.